So let's start with the first bit, building the cross compiler, the cross compiling tool chain. The first thing I'm going to build is bin utils. So let's go to LFS sources. There's all the packages. Um, one thing I'm going to do, because I sometimes do this, is I'm going to change all of these files to read only because um, I sometimes delete these by accident without thinking. So I'll we'll do U minus W on all these files. Right, and that's probably because they're owned by root. So let's do that again. Schmod U minus W star. So they're all read only. So let's go back to the LFS user change into LFS sources. That's okay. So first one I'm going to do is bin utils. So as with all these packages you extract it first. Change into the source directory and then start with the instructions. And you'll see me well it probably look like I'm just blindly copying and pasting and yeah most of the time it is that but if you're not very um, well acquainted with Linux from scratch I'd advise you to read everything on the page don't just copy everything that's in a grey box just read and, and learn after all that's what Linux from scratch is really all about it's about learning a bit more about Linux and just copying and pasting commands you won't learn anything at all apart from how to copy and paste um, in fact I, from my own personal experience the first few times I installed Linux from scratch I typed all the commands in by hand. I didn't copy and paste. That was not through choice. I was very inexperienced, only a little bit more inexperienced than I, than I am now. I didn't know about copying and pasting and telnetting and SSHing in the computers from remote com computer terminals and so on. It was the only way I knew at the time of um, getting commands in on the command prompt. And it forced me a, not only to learn about the structure of the commands and what the commands did themselves, but how uh, commands are formatted and so on, um, and what the individual components of the commands do. So if you really do want to learn a bit more about the command line as well as Linux, then I would recommend installing the commands, putting the commands in by hand. Um, it will be painful because you will make typo, typos and you'll have to find out why it's gone wrong. But you'll you'll learn a great deal more from it rather than just copying and pasting. Even just reading, you know, copying and pasting and reading is not as good in my opinion and in my experience as actually typing in the commands. Okay, so that's built. Let's install it. And that's done. So let's tidy that up. And move on to the first build of the compiler. So again, extract it, change into the directory, and then start following the instructions in the book. And as I said before, if you're not really um, experienced with LFS, put these commands in one at a time, just to check for errors. Um, 
and again it's it's knowing about Linux and what a command is. This is a whole command, it's just got sub commands within this case command, so technically it needs to be copied as one unit. Now we've got a big configure command. Another thing about copying and pasting, just ensure that you've captured the first and last characters. I know in the past I've copied and pasted in a hurry and something's not worked and I've realised I've missed like the first dot there or I've missed the last bit there and something's not worked because that last character's been missing and just that one missing character can make all the difference. So let's start that building. As I said before, this, these first chapters where we're building stuff uh, for the temporary tools, they don't mention running check anymore. I mean, it was really very little point before. Um, probably only really wanted to do it if you're really unsure about something being built correctly or not. Um, so it looks like they just get us to build it all and then we do the testing in the final chapter, chapter 8.
Okay, so that's finished building. Install it. And then there's just a header that needs to be fixed here. And that's done. So some kernel API headers is what we're going to install next. So I'll just clear the source tree. And then I'm just going to run these in one at a time because they take up more than the screen full. Just to make sure I can see the output from them. And that's all fine. So now we do the C library. Run the configure. It says not to worry about this warning here that might appear. And we'll just build the system now.
Okay, so it's built. Now there's warnings here about checking the LFS variable set correctly in case you're a, there's a root. Well, if you've been following the book, you shouldn't be a root. Should be the user. So, I mean, we can check it again. It should be there. It is. So, it's safe to go ahead with this. Okay, it's done so we've just got a little sanity check make sure the new library is working correctly and you can see the output of that matches what's on the screen there in the book and if you're in uh, building 32-bit version then the output will be this instead let's tidy that up and just finally run this command in here. And that's glibc done. So extract GCC for the lib standard C++ library. So we just tidy that up and that's the end of the cross compi uh, compiling the cross call toolchain chapter.